every woman that finally figure out her worth has picked up her suitcase of pride and boarded a flight to freedom, which landed in the valley of change. Congratulations for having left that emotionally abusive relationship. I'm cheering for you. You're in front of a great opportunity, maybe the opportunity of your lifetime. Now you could go and find a rebound relationship and fall into the very same emotionally abusive patterns or not. Imagine the upside. Imagine the possibility of indeed building a future that is full of love, vitality, honesty, truth, love. Wow, is that possible? Of course it is. Of course there is one guy in the world who could be absolutely perfect for you. But this guy will never be magnetized by you as long as you believe that you are not worthy. So now is your time to change your magnetic power to attract what you are wanting to attract. So this is your chance. In this video, I'm going to share with you eight steps for you to use this time in liminal space to let go of what was and build what it will be. Excited? Step number one, intention setting. Decide right now that this time is for you, for you to reconnect with who you truly are, reconnect with the values that you cherish, with the vision of the future that you don't even know, so that you can attract that vision of the future. So there is nothing else more important. There is nobody who is going to come, no rebound relationship, not friends with benefit who will come and distract you from your intention. This is fundamental for everything else to work. If you don't do this, forget about it. Click off this video. You are going to attract another emotionally unavailable person like this. We don't want that. Very happy that you're still here with us and we're ready to go to step number two. Step number two, look, you are going to be inundated by emotions. There are going to be moments in which you're going to be crying, missing him. There are going to be moments when you're crying, blaming him, blaming yourself. Emotions are just going to pop up all the time. What did I do? Regret or, oh, I need a new guy. Just emotions are going to come everywhere. And there is the tendency to try to solve this using the mind, because of course you are an intelligent woman and you will try to disconnect your emotions and start living from the head. Well, no, we're going to do things differently. You are going to use your body. So step number two is everything about connecting and healing your body. Everything that has to do with your body, have it in the best possible shape possible. You start with the sleeping. Improve your sleeping ritual, your sleeping processes, your sleeping uh, products. <laughs> Invest in a good uh, um, skincare for the night. So that you do the skincare before you go to bed, you do your teeth before you go to bed, a good book instead of a scrolling endlessly, a good pyjama, the best pyjama that you can afford, the best linen that, that you can afford, so that you can sleep the best possible way. It's a third of your life. If you improve this, this uh, healing yourself of emotional uh, abuse is going to be just easier 
the other big elements of healing your body, you already know it, diet and exercise. Go outside, get, get into nature, uh, do weight lifting, do weight uh, yoga, go swimming, get yourself moving, get the sweat out. Your heart is going to be grateful to you. Investigate which diet is the best for you, but don't be complicated, you know, don't, don't get lost into, oh my God, all the possibilities about diet. Do the simple things. You know that water is better than alcohol. For example, uh, do something. Don't wait until you have done all the research. Follow your intuition of what feels better for you in your body. Number three. Number three is curate. Is the ultimate uh, expansion of the great recommendation of Jordan Peterson clean your room. You are going to clean your room in absolutely all areas of your life. Likely you move out or he moved out. So you have suitcases or empty wardrobes. You have to arrange and move really literally the energy left, right, and center. Um, you know, clean constantly. Um, clean constantly with attention of saying, should this be in my life or shouldn't it? I remember when I was doing a cleanup similar to this, I found my mini skirts. And then I asked myself, well, am I the girl of the mini skirts? Well, no, I'm, I'm not the girl of the mini skirts. I am a grown up woman. I don't do this anymore. That was my younger self. It's time for the mini skirts to go. In the kitchen, I never had a vegetable steamer. Hmm. Now I want vegetable steamer because it has the veggies and I take care of my body. Hmm. Maybe that should come in. That is what is curating pluses and minuses, pluses and minuses. And do it with the mini skirts, with the vegetable steamers, and do it with projects and with books and with love letters and with... Just curate the life that you want. What are the color, shapes, tastes that you want around your life? Do it with your agenda. Just, you know, take it very seriously. Take it as far as you want to take it. The idea is that you create your life as beautiful as your soul is. Curate your life. Number four. Find the blessings. Yeah, I said correctly, blessings, that is the blessing and the lesson. This experience you had is full of blessings. <laughs> you attracted this man into your life as a spiritual teacher. He came to teach you things about you that you never imagined. For example, I tell you about my ex. I used to be very nice. That means whatever you will tell me, even if I will disagree with, I will not start any argument because I just wanted peace. I hated confrontation. I hated conflict. Why? Because I come from a family of divorced parents and they used to fight all the time. So I hate it. And he told me, no, Blanca, but what do you think? What do you think? And he really pressed me into expressing my opinion. And yeah, after the breakup, I realized that this was one of the gifts that that relationship gave to me. So I decided to express my opinion more openly, to dare to say what I think. Well, that was just so fantastic because as I dared to express what I think, I attracted people who think huh, relatively similar to me and also to have wonderful conversations with other people who disagree with me but are open for conversations. You see, the reason why you manifested this money to your life 
is to expand your soul. And if you notice that right now, you will be able to create a more expansive future. And so to do this, to manage to transform triggers into lessons, I created a video for you. I will link it before below. Point number five. Point number five is to journal. Journal can be an intellectual exercise but I want you to do it in the most emotional possible way. Yes, buy a journal and write every day three pages in the style of Julia Cameron uh, morning pages. Just write in the most honest structure, unsophisticated. Don't forget about thinking about uh, becoming a, a, a Nobel Prize literature winner. Don't worry about it. Nobody's going to read it. Just write. Just write and really let your intuition guide you. And if sometimes you just want to draw, draw, but just let it out. Let it out. Particularly, I offer you the idea of writing your feelings. I fear, I'm angry, I'm sad, and just get the feelings out. And it doesn't matter that you repeat it 2,000 times, just let it out. My Aztec ancestors saw water as emotions. So you're dealing with a lot of emotions. And if you write that down, you unclog the flow of all this water, you unclog the flow of all these emotions out. And don't worry if it sounds repetitive to your intellect. It needs to flow. And as it flows, you will become fertile ground because everything is going to start moving. And instead of being a storm, it will become the muddy, fertile ground for your future reality. So just journal. Journal in the morning if that is what makes you happy. Journal in the evening. Carry your journal and journal in the bus. Just journal all the time so that you take it out because you have so much water. Think about having so much water. If you don't let it out, it becomes polluted. It, be, it gives you, it gives source to all kinds of trouble. It actually somatizes and can get you ill. So we don't want that. So please journal, express yourself, let it out. Uh, for the people who are not of the writing disposition, you can journal artistically. You can paint, you can dance, you can do sculptures, but take those emotions out of your system. Number six, this is the perfect time to date yourself. Let's think about how dating used to be. Dating used to be an activity of getting to know each other. Getting to know each other, let's see if you like to do badminton. Let's see if you like to do ballroom dancing. Let's see if you like tacos. <laughs> this is how dating used to be. The, the two persons were together in different activities to see if they were compatible. So now you're going to date yourself. You are going to take yourself on dates and dates doing activities that are completely foreign to you. If you never ate Korean food, go and eat Korean food. If you never do rock climbing, go and do rock climbing. If you never had your nails done, have your nails done. If you never... As long as it is not risky, you know, <laughs> do things that are ethical and, you know, that you are safe, but still expand who you thought you were. When I was uh, doing this, my main thing was about cooking and eating. 
it was fantastic. I enjoyed so much food that I never ate before. Uh, and that was a joy, you know, I expanded my cultural awareness, I expanded my understanding and realized that for me is really important uh, adventure, the adventure of learning for me is very important learning, because that is the objective of dating yourself, to remember who you are, to remember what is what you like. And there is a sub point in this dating yourself is that you are going to be your date at least during this period. And I offer you the idea, the suggestion that this period is about three months. Why? Because how are you going to get to know you if you don't spend time with yourself? You know, don't take it as an a strict rule, like I said, three months. And if I met a guy in the second month, I cannot date him. Use your... Uh, your your mind open your eyes to to see to discern yourself but at least for three months don't date anybody don't date anybody particularly don't get into intimate relationships because you see particularly sexual relationships because you see is sacred and that's the reason why it's called sex because it is three twice is body mind and the spirit connecting twice so you're so there's not a one night stand that doesn't affect your soul so if you really are going to be true to your intention of figuring out who is who you are you shouldn't get yourself into rebound situations. Take yourself serious, respect yourself, respect your time. At this moment, not. If you find a person that is super interesting, go out for coffee. Go out for a second coffee. <laughs> go for a walk. That is fine. But Stay within your intention, stay within your priority of leveling up your own self, your own vision of what you want. Once you feel finished, you can go and date and date many people, many cup of coffee. <laughs> See what they, uh, uh, how they are, how you are, how you react, but that will be later. I'll make a video about that to help you what to do after this period. Number seven, spend time with positive people. Positive people, especially positive old women. This recommendation, you cannot imagine how good it did to me. When you have, when you spend your time around young, negative women, you will hear stories that there are no men around, all men are bad. When you get surrounded by cynics, this is what you are going to get yourself into your mind. When you get surrounded by wise women, you are going to get yourself full of hope. I would argue that that was one of the key reasons why I found my husband, I found I was able to attract him. I had this friend, she was 70 and just married. A man who was 60, he chased her all over the world because of her job. She had to travel overseas everywhere. And he chased her until she said yes. And she was my friend at this time when I was doing all these steps of self-reinvention. Just to see her and to see that this possible to be loved even if you are super old can you imagine 70 with all the wrinkles and all the gray hair and she was the happiest woman I think I have ever met no there have been other happy women but uh, <laughs> surround yourself with people full of hope if they are old and they are women even better so, of course, I invite you to be here because I'm an old woman. 
<laughs> so I invite you right now to like the video and subscribe if this is touching your heart because I certainly hope to help you. Like the video is free. Step number eight. As you do all this and you are journaling, you are going to start envisioning the future. Start envisioning the things that you would like to see in your future. When I was doing this, one of the important things that, ha uh, that came was art and plants. Now, you can see in my house that painting, I painted it myself. The, that plant is not the only one that I have at home. I'm surrounded by them. That's important for me. As you envision the future, you will clarify what are your values. Doing this will upgrade who you are internally and externally, will magnetize the people who you want around because you will become that person that they want in your life. And this is so powerful because it is not just about that particularly uh, that particular romantic relationship. All relationships will improve. Friendships, your relationships with your family. As you level up your connection with your self-worth, everything will change. And this happened with envisioning the future. And envisioning the future is just the first element of making a plan. Regarding this subject of leveling up the vision of the future and setting up a plan for the next chapter of your life, I have a great resource for you. The Level Up Retreat. It is fully online. You can do it at your own pace. Uh, what is a great benefit is that you will translate all the learnings that you will uh, have in following these eight steps that we mentioned in this video, translating them into a plan, a plan of action of what will be after being in this liminal space, who you will become that next woman that you so want to embody. Check it out. The link is below and I see you in the next video.